Hey gang, Scott here. I've got a tip for you today for dealing with chromatic aberration. This is that purple and green fringing that we see in high contrast areas of photos. All lenses have some level of this. Uh, some lenses have more than others, as you'll see with this photo I'm about to share with you. But there are a couple of ways to deal with this in Lightroom. One you're probably familiar with. You know, click the checkbox and most of the time it does a pretty good job. But if it doesn't, there's some other things we can do to fine tune it, get rid of it, and really deal with those, uh, those fringes. And really quick, if you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Button so you don't miss a beat kind of tells me that yeah this is about the right pace of a video you like and uh, the quick tips are enjoyable for you so let's have a look at this photo here so I've got this photo here uh, not one of my best but it will illustrate what is a really wicked case of color fringing I mean you can see it not even zoomed in you can see it right here in this V I've got purple on the right hand side I've got green over on the left hand side this lens I have a known problem. It's got some just <laughs> really, really bad color fringing. Uh, love the wide angle, but man, the color fringing, I zoom in there. This is just at basically about 100%. It's really strong. How do we deal with this? I'm going to move this uh, panel over here so it's close to our lens corrections. We can see everything in one shot here. First, let me enable the profile corrections. That's just our normal barrel and pin cushion distortion, you know, correcting all that stuff. First option we have is remove chromatic aberration. This is probably the one you know about, right? You check the box. Oh my gosh, it looks so much better. Things are looking great. And a lot of times that's all you need. But sometimes you need to go a little bit deeper. You need to fine tune things. And that's where the manual side of this tool comes in. And a couple of controls that you may not understand how they work that will let you really fine tune this. Now to see what's going on here, we're going to zoom in really, really far. I'm going to go into like almost 300%. So let's just zoom way in here, like yeah, like 300. This is going to be very pixelated. But notice, there's, there's that little V that we were working in. There is still color fringing in here, and I've already checked the box, right? Before, it was terrible. After, mm, it's better, but it could be even more reduced. We go into manual. And what we have is a few controls. We have a mount and we can push this around and we'll see it. We'll see a shift, right? We can see that shift on the purple. We can see that shift on the green. And uh, let me move this closer so we can look at everything at the same time, right? We got that. We got the purple changing. Well, there's an easier way to work as opposed to eyeballing it. Use the eyedropper. We'll hover over and as I get close, you'll see that cursor changes to a purple tone and the crosshairs inside the, the loop, that's telling me what color I'm picking. Now I click once, the amount is set for me automatically, the purple hue range is set for me automatically, and now I can control the range. I could tighten that up if that was too much or too little. I can shift into the blues, and if I, if I start playing with things like, you, you'll, you'll start to see the shift, right? You can see that, that shift moving around, that color fringing bouncing back and forth. Let me redo my, my picker so we can get back into uh, some, some area of normalcy. Matter of fact, let's, uh, let's reset and go ahead and, and do that one more time. Reset the fringe, go ahead and pick that tone of purple right around in the middle there. That looks good. Click and drag inside in between these two points and you can shift the range. So that's another nice feature of it. In this case, I'll dial it back right around there. I don't want to introduce any of that, that pink up top. So we'll dial that in. We shift it back down a little bit here. There we go. That's looking good. And keep in mind, we're zoomed in 300%. So things are pixelated. Same applies for the green. We'll go over to the green area. We eventually get close to a green tone. And we should see our cursor start to change. Let's find that green in there. This is getting harder to find. The, uh, the profile did a better job on the green. And if you know, notice that uh, cursor now is like a, like a white color. If I try to pick that, it's going to say, nope, this is not a, a green or a purple. So you have some protection there. You won't get a wrong choice. And it looks like I'm just not finding anything there that the picker's going to choose. And yeah, sure enough, the green fringing is, is actually pretty good. The purple was a little bit stronger. The same controls we have. We have the ability to shift the hue. I guess I need an amount for that to make an actual difference. Can see that move around. But that is how these controls work. And so to, to kind of recap that, start off by just going into the profile and turning on chromatic aberration. Then go into manual, use your picker, your eyedropper, 
to choose those fringe colors to really fine tune them. Now, one thing I do want to point out is you want to resist the temptation to just jump into manual and go clicking away. And, and here's why. The profile does add something. Uh, we have fine-tuned our fringe, right? If I go back to the profile and I turn off the automatics, notice the darkness that's there. Some of that green came back because we relied on the profile in this case, but notice this dark band here. Well, the profile is not only taking care of the fringing, it's also balancing out some of the tonality. So if we get back out to uh, you know 100%, something a little more reasonable, we can still see that before and after. That's really helpful. So do go ahead and check that box, but if it doesn't do enough, pop over to manual, use that eyedropper, and use the controls to fine tune it. Remember, you can drag the range around as well as the endpoints, drag in between those two points to adjust that range. Well, that's the tip. Uh, maybe a little bit long-winded, but I hope you enjoyed it and it gave you a little more knowledge about chromatic aberration. If that checkbox doesn't work, don't be afraid of manual anymore. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.